Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa today issued Royal Decree 42 of 2021, establishing Bahrain's diplomatic mission to Israel. His Majesty the King also issued Dec Royal Decree 43 of 2021, appointing Ambassador Khaled Yusuf Al Yamahi as head of Bahrain's diplomatic mission to Israel. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa today ratified and issued Law 8 of 2021, promulgating the Sports Professionalism Law. The law stipulates that contracts may be signed with professional athletes to practice the sports specified in the contracts. Each professional contract, whose parties must abide by the rules of the relevant national and international federation, shall be registered with and approved by the relevant sports federation. According to the law, Sports Federation shall establish offices specialising in registering professional contracts, subject to the provisions of this law. Each Sports Federation shall, after the approval of the Minister and the President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, issue regulations for the professional sports system and contracts for professional athletes in a manner that does not conflict with the laws and regulations of national and international sports federations within one year after this law comes into force. His Majesty also ratified and issued Law 9 of 2021, approving the general state budget for the fiscal years 2021 and 2022. The law has already been approved by the two chambers of the National Assembly. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa and the successful organisation of the Formula One at Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix 2021. His Highness said that the success has further bolstered Bahrain's honourable image, in line with His Majesty's vision to turn the kingdom into the home of motorsport in the Middle East. His Highness prayed to Allah the Almighty to bless His Majesty the King with good health and happiness, wishing him success and the kingdom of Bahrain further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, today received the Minister of State and Member of Cabinet of Saudi Arabia. His Royal Highness, Prince Turkey bin Mohammed bin, Fad Al bin Abdulaziz Al Saud at Rifa Palace. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and His Royal Highness Prince Turkey Al Saud exchanged the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the custodian of the two mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince affirmed that enduring Bahraini-Saudi ties are anchored in the shared commitment to strengthen existing ties between His Majesty the King and the custodian of the two holy mosques. His Royal Highness noted that the ever-growing partnership continues to serve the interest and security of both countries and underlined the pivotal role Saudi Arabia plays in regional stability as well as the global economy. For his part, His Royal Highness Prince Turkey Al Saud expressed appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for continuing to support strengthened bilateral relations. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince then hosted a lunch banquet in honour of His Royal Highness Prince Turkey Al Saud and his accompanying delegation. The meeting was attended by the Chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa and the Ambassador of Saudi Arabia to Bahrain, His Royal Highness Prince Sultan bin Ahmed bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met the State Councillor and Minister of Foreign Affairs of China, Wang Yi, at Rifa Palace. Yi expressed the greetings of the President of China, Xi Jinping and the greetings of the Premier of the State Council of China, Li Qingqiang. In response, His Royal Highness extended his sincere greetings to both the President and the Prime Minister of China. He highlighted the wide-ranging growth in relations between Bahrain and China, which continues to be supported by cooperation across various sectors. His Royal Highness noted that the global COVID-19 pandemic has added a new dimension to international cooperation, driven by humanitarian principles, and commitment to full economic recovery. He noted that in line with His Majesty's directives, the Kingdom continues to cooperate with its international partners in combating the spread of COVID-19 and safeguarding the health of all, adding that Bahrain has become a, 
statistic suggests a model for COVID-19 mitigation efforts thanks to the national efforts, social awareness of citizens and residents and the responsibility that comes along with it. His Royal Highness conveyed the Kingdom's role as a key partner in UAE and China in COVID-19 phase three clinical trials. In this regard, he noted the Kingdom's commitment to strengthening joint cooperation between the two countries. His Royal Highness and Yi also discussed ways to further strengthen bilateral trade and economic cooperation. Additional regional and international issues of common interest were also discussed. For his part, Yi expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and noticed his continued commitment in furthering bilateral ties. He noted the Kingdom's ongoing contribution alongside international partners in combating the spread of COVID-19 and active cooperation with China in this regard. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, were also present. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received a cable of congratulations from Deputy Prime Minister, His Highness Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa and the successful organisation of the Formula One at Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix. His Highness said his success has further bolstered Bahrain's honourable image, in line with His Majesty's vision to turn the kingdom into the home of motorsport in the Middle East. He praised the efforts of the organising committee and the people of Bahrain in ensuring the success of the event. He wished His Royal Highness abundant health and further progress and prosperity for the kingdom and its people. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received a cable of congratulations from Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa on the successful hosting of the Formula One at Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix 2021. The Deputy Prime Minister noted that hosting a successful F1 race during unprecedented times builds on Bahrain's long track record of success and His Royal Highness's keen focus on delivering His Majesty the King's visions. He wished His Royal Highness continued good health and the Kingdom of Bahrain greater prosperity. The National Guard Commander, His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, received the BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Thea bin Saga Al Nuemi. The National Guard Staff Director, Major General Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Saud Al Khalifa, was present. The meeting discussed topics of common interest, reviewing many aspects to develop Middle Street cooperation. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa praised the cooperation between the National Guard and the BDF, stressing the BDF's role in protecting Bahrain and maintaining its security and stability. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, extend his thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on the issuance of the law on sports professionalism in the Kingdom, affirming the positive impact of this law on Bahraini sports. The Bahraini sports movement has witnessed remarkable development thanks to the limited support of His Majesty the King. His Highness underscored the issuance of a number of laws by His Majesty which played a prominent role in advancing sport in general and organisation of sports in particular. He also noted the, the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness praised the efforts of the first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the Brain Olympic Committee and Chairman of the Coordination, Implementation and Follow-up Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness further commended the efforts of the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman Al Mawayed, and his keenness on bolstering cooperation with the Legislative Authority to facilitate the approval of the Sports Professionalism Law. Sheikh Nasser also praised the support and cooperation of the Parliament members. His Highness added that the next stage will focus on the athletic professionalism and achieving administrative and technical balance and stability, which will grant Bahraini sports more flexibility. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for issuing the law on sports professionalism in the Kingdom. 
His Highness affirmed that the issuance of the law is an extension of the support that sports and the athletes in the kingdom received from His Majesty the King, which contributed to making many achievements in various sports. He added that the law will create a quantum leap in Bahraini sports. His Highness hailed the efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to support the sports sector, which contributed to preparing an infrastructure in a manner that served to continue the development of this vital sector. He commended the role of the representative of His Majesty the King for humanitarian work and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in the developmental strategies that His Highness created, which contributed to making further successes. He also expressed appreciation for the efforts of the heads and members of the representatives and Shura councils who contributed to the issuance of the sports professionalism law. The Deputy Prime Minister and President of the Supreme Council for the Development of Education and Training, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, patronised the 4th Education Quality and Training Authority Conference. The conference was held under the theme The Future of Education and Training Quality Between Global Trends and Local Implementation. More than 700 specialists, academics and educators from over 30 countries participated in the event. At the opening of the conference, His Highness declared in a speech on this occasion. <laughs> وبركاته يسعدني مشاركتكم افتتاح مؤتمر هيئة جودة التعليم والتدريب الرابع الذي يأتي هذا العام تحت عنوان مستقبل جودة التعليم والتدريب بين التوجهات العالمية والتنفيذ المحلي وبهذه المشاركة المحلية والإقليمية والدولية المؤثرة والفاعلة في ميدان جودة التعليم والتدريب بما يضفي الجودة والأهمية على المؤتمر آملا أن تكلل أعماله بالنجاح والتوفيق الحضور الكرام في تقرير نشرته الأمم المتحدة في أغسطس 2020 بعنوان التعليم أثناء جائحة كورونا وما بعدها يذكر التقرير أن هذه الجائحة قد تسببت بأكثر انقطاع في نظام التعليم في التاريخ وما نتج عنه من تضرر نحو 1.6 بليون طالب وطالبة في أكثر من 190 بلدا في العالم ومن جميع القارات كما يذكر التقرير أن تلك الجائحة كانت سببا في عمليات إغلاق المدارس وغيرها من مؤسسات التعليم بنسب تتراوح بين 94 و 99% بحسب مستوى الدخل للبلدان المتضررة حضور الكرام قبل 100 عام وأكثر بدأت البحرين نهضة التعليم المؤسسي وخاضت ذلك التحدي بكل عزيمة ذلك عندما تم تأسيس مدرسة الهداية الخليفية كأول مدرسة نظامية في البحرين في عام 1919 حيث شهدت العملية التعليمية منذ ذلك الوقت محطات تغير وتطوير من حيث الأهداف التعليمية ومراحل الدراسة وفقا للمتغيرات ومتطلبات سوق العمل وبرامج التنمية الشاملة من واقع الإيمان بأن التعليم هو المستقبل وبقياس حضارة الأمم وتقدم مناظرة الدول والشعوب يأتي ذلك في ضوء المتغيرات التي تطرأ على المجتمعات والتطور التكنولوجي الهائل الذي يشهده العالم وأثر ذلك على الاقتصاد وفي ظل تساؤل المختصون والتربويين من حيث أهمية البحث المستمر في مراجعة أنظمة التعليم بدءا من رياض الأطفال وحتى التعليم ما بعد المدرسي أي ما بعد المرحلة الثانوية 
من أجل تأسيس نظام تعليمي مواكب لمتطلبات القرن الحادي والعشرين قادر على تخريج جيل متعلم قوامه الإبداع والابتكار والمنافسة في مجالات الحياة المختلفة وإدراكا لذلك وتزامنا مع إطلالة المشروع الإصلاحي لحضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة عاهل البلاد حفظه الله ورعاه واهتمام وتوجيهات جلالته بتحقيق التطور النوعي للتعليم جاء مشروع تطوير التعليم والتدريب الذي أطلقه صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء شاملا للعديد من المبادرات الأساسية يأتي من بينها إنشاء هيئة جودة التعليم والتدريب كهيئة مستقلة تراعي في عملها معايير الجودة العالمية من حيث جودة المناهج والمقررات الدراسية وكفاءة الأطر التعليمية والإدارية والبنية التحتية في إطار نظام تقييم شامل مراع للشفافية والاستمرار خلال 12 عاما ومنذ إنشائها نجحت هيئة جودة التعليم والتدريب بمملكة البحرين في مواكبة أنظمة الجودة إقليميا ودوليا حيث وقع ما يقارب من 20 مذكرة تفاهم واتفاقية التعاون مع مؤسسات وهيئات متخصصة دولية ومحلية لنقل التجارب والخبرات تلك الاتفاقيات وفرت للهيئة فرصا كثيرة لأن تكون أرضا خصبة لإعداد الخبرات المهنية في تقييم جودة أداء التعليم والتدريب حيث نجحت خلالها في إنجاز أكثر من 1712 تقرير شامل لنتائج جودة أداء المدارس الحكومية والخاصة والجامعات والمعاهد وتضمنت أيضا نتائج إدراج المؤسسات التعليمية والتدريبية وتسكين المؤهلات الوطنية وإسناد المؤهلات الأجنبية على الإطار الوطني للمؤهلات تلك المراجعات لم تتوقف في ظل جائحة كورونا ولكنها فسحت المجال لإبداعات متجددة قام بها المختصون في هيئة جودة التعليم والتدريب من خلال التحول الرقمي لعدد كبير من عملياتها حيث صمموا أطرا جديدة لتقييم أداء مؤسسات التعليم والتدريب وفق ظروف التعليم عن بعد كما تعمل اللجان التنفيذية حاليا على تطوير نظام الامتحانات الوطنية ليخرج بصورة مطورة ومحدثة ليحقق الأهداف الوطنية المرجوة منه وهو نجاح آخر يضاف لهذه المؤسسة المستقلة لتطوير التعليم والتدريب وها هي تقوم بأدوارها الوطنية بكل إخلاص ومهنية واقتدار الحضور الكرام استمرارا لعملية التطوير وفي ضوء تقارير هيئة جودة التعليم والتدريب فقد وقعت الحكومة عقدا مدته عامين مع أحدى الشركات العالمية ذات الخبرة في مجال التعليم من أجل إعادة هيكلة وزارة التربية والتعليم وتعزيز دورها في تشغيل المدارس وتنظيم التعليم الأساسي حيث بدأ العمل بتنفيذ هذه التوصيات التطويرية وذلك لتمكين الوزارة من مواكبة المستجدات وأداء دورها بفعالية وكفاءة في المجالات التعليمية والإدارية كما يتم أثر ذلك تنفيذ استراتيجية تطوير التعليم ما بعد المدرسي وتعزيز دور مؤسسات التعليم التطبيقي من خلال وضع الأهداف الاستراتيجية لرفع نسبة الالتحاق بالتعليم التطبيقي ما بعد المدرسي إلى 50% في بحلول 2030 وذلك بالتعاون مع القطاع الخاص واستجابة لمتطلبات الثورة الصناعية المعاصرة لإعداد أجيال تمتلك مهارات التنافس في سوق العمل الحضور الكرام بجودة التعليم والتدريب نستطيع 
أن نساهم في النهضة الشاملة والارتقاء في البيئة التعليمية والمدرسية التي هي عماد تلك النهضة في وقت تتسابق فيه الأمم لاستكشاف الفضاء والعمل على معالجة التحديات البيئية واختارها على مستقبل البشرية وإذا ما أردنا أن نكون مؤثرين في هذا المجال فعلينا التعاون لتحديد استراتيجيات وأهداف جودة التعليم والتدريب التي نريد وأن نسعى جميعا لتحقيقها وبكل ما أوتينا من الإمكانات والكفاءات والمهارات وبتضافر الجهود لتحقيق ذلك إن جائحة كورونا التي تجتاح العالم ورغم فتاحة تأثيراتها السلبية على كافة مناحي الحياة وما سببته من خسائر بشرية ومالية كبيرة قد هيئت الفرصة للتفكير في طرق جديدة للنهوض بالتعليم وسبل تقديمه من قبل المؤسسات التعليمية تحت أي ضغط أو ظروف طارئة وأن هذا المؤتمر وانعقاده يأتي دليلا على إمكانية انتقال العالم إلى نمط جديد من التواصل المعرفي والتكنولوجي الحديث والذي كان يمارس على نطاقات محدودة في الختام يسرني أقدم الشكر لهيئة جودة التعليم والتدريب ومجلس إدارتها وكافة متسبيها على ما يقومون به من جهد وما يضعونه من خطط تحقيقا لمستقبل تعليمي وتدريبي مشرق لمملكة البحرين وما للسمعة الإقليمية والدولية التي أحرزوها إلا دليل على جودة الأداء وإتقانه وما نجاحهم في استضافة هذه الكفاءات الإقليمية والدولية في هذا المؤتمر الهام إلا تأكيد الثقة التي حققوها على مدى عقد من العطاء الذي نتمنى أن يتواصل من خلال تلك المشاركات وعقد المؤتمرات وتعزيز العلاقات وتبادل الخبرات ونقل التجارب لما فيه خير التعليم الذي هو أساس رقي الأمم ونهضة شعوبها وسبيل نموها وتقدمها والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The Deputy Prime Minister, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, received the Minister of State to the Middle East and North Africa at the Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office of the United Kingdom, James Cleverly. The meeting discussed a number of topics of common interest based on the two countries' keenness to maintain regional and international security and stability. It also reviewed means of strengthening cooperation and relations between Bahrain and the UK in various fields that serve the common interests of both their countries and peoples. The meeting was attended by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, a British delegation, and a number of senior officials in Bahrain. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs held an ordinary meeting virtually under the chairmanship of its president, Sheikh Abdul Rabdam bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa. The Council praised the national vaccination campaign which offers free vaccines to citizens and residents and called on all to vaccinate to protect themselves and the society at large. The Council expressed appreciation for the Kingdom's efforts in combating the pandemic thanks to the directives of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa and the leadership of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. The Council affirmed that the vaccine does not break one's fast during Ramadan. The meeting also praised the role of Saudi Arabia in safeguarding the safety and stability of the region, most recently through its peace initiative in Yemen, and announced the Iran-backed Houthi militias targeting of innocent people in Saudi Arabia and the world economy. The Education Minister, Majid bin Ali al Nuemi participated in a virtual UNESCO meeting under the theme One Year into Covid, prioritising education recovery to avoid a generational catastrophe. Officials concerned with the education sector from more than 170 countries participated in the event. Minister al Nawemi praised the support of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa al Khalifa for the educational process and its development, 
pointing out to the visual speech that His Majesty gave to workers in the educational field and students at the beginning of the pandemic, during which he emphasised the continuation of distance education in these exceptional circumstances. In its report presented during the meeting, the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development praised Bahrain's achievements in providing education for all during the pandemic, including students with special needs, by adopting a distance learning mechanism and urging students to use digital devices and providing people with limited income at these devices with a combination of flexibility in operating electronic services and a focus on digital multimedia solutions. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, met with the State Councillor and Minister of Foreign Affairs of China, Wang Yi, during his official visit to Bahrain as part of his tour of the region. The Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed his appreciation for the historical friendship between the two countries. He also underlined the importance of strengthening bilateral cooperation and mutual coordination and the importance of developing and enhancing such relations for the common interests of both countries. Wang Yi expressed his pleasure to visit the Kingdom of Bahrain, praising the strength and historic friendship between the two countries in light of the mutual keenness to enhance bilateral cooperation in various fields. The two sides also discussed cooperation to combat COVID-19. The two sides reviewed the successful cooperation between Bahrain, the UAE and China in phase three clinical trials of COVID-19 vaccination in cooperation with the Emirati Group 42. The Chief Executive of the Bahrain Economic Development Board, Khaled Humedan, gave a presentation in which he addressed the EDB's efforts to enhance economic development and the available investment opportunities in the Kingdom. At the end of the meeting, a cultural agreement was signed between the two countries and the mutual establishment of cultural centres and the Executive Programme for Cultural Agreement between Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities and the Ministry of Culture and Tourism in China. The agreement notes that both China and Bahrain will establish a Chinese cultural centre in Manama and a Bahraini in Beijing. The Defence Affairs Minister, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan al Nawemi, inaugurated Khalifa bin Ahmed al Tarani Mosque in Zayed Town. Khalifa bin Ahmed al Tarani and the Sunni Endowments Council's Chairman, Sheikh Dr. Rashid bin Mohammed al Hajri, were present. The Minister praised the keenness of the Kingdom under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to serve and support Houses of Worship. The Minister for the Middle East and North Africa at the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, James Cleverley, arrived in Bahrain for a two-day visit to attend the 13th Bahrain-UK Joint Working Group. He was received at Bahrain International Airport by the Ambassador of Bahrain to the UK, Sheikh Faz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for International Affairs, Dr Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and the Ambassador of the UK to Bahrain, Roderick Drummond. During an interactive dialogue with the UN, the Assistant Minister for Foreign Affairs, Abdullah bin Faisal bin Jaba al Dossari, affirmed that Bahrain is proud of its achievements in protecting human rights, both in the regional and international levels, thanks to the keenness and care of His Majesty the King. The UN coordinator in the Kingdom, Mohammed al Zakani, affirmed the international community's keenness to develop the national plan of the Kingdom of Bahrain regarding human rights. The regional representative of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights in the Middle East and North Africa, Ruwadi al Hajj, explained that developing a national action plan for the human rights confirms the state's interest in taking concrete steps to promote and protect these rights. The head of the Universal Periodic Review Department and the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, Gianni Magazzini, praises the progress and promotion of human rights in the Kingdom of Bahrain. This dialogue comes as a continuation of a series of workshops concerned with preparing the National Human Rights Plan. The Institute of Public Administration, BIPA, Director General Dr. Raed Mohammed bin Shams stressed that the current phase of government work requires the application of innovation as a permanent culture within the institutional work system. 
This came as he announced a collaboration with the United Nations Development Programme, UNDP, to further integrate innovation in all government leadership programmes that BIPA presents. The joint collaboration originates from the observation that innovation should be in all parts of the public sector. to respond to the increasing demands and expectations from the population and the ever-changing environment that requires more flexibility, adaption and renovation in practices and methodologies. To speak more about this, we are joined on the phone by the Institute of Public Administration, BIPA, Director General, Dr. Ayd Mohammed bin Shams. Hello, Dr. Ayd. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Pleasure can, to be with you today. Can you elaborate on the collaboration between BIPA and the UNDP, please? Sure. Um, the project uh, started in nearly uh, a year ago. It was through the program of innovation. Um, with uh, an institute in Helsinki uh, arranged through the UNDP uh, network. The point over there is um, innovation is not luxury nowadays. If we really want to solve our problems and even change those to future uh, uh, challenges so that we can really tackle the future, not just today's problems, then we have to think differently. We have to put the innovation into the hands of each and every official and each and every civil servant. Uh, otherwise, um, we are going to solve our, pro our problems as we used to do it, and we are going to do the same as we have done before. This is why innovation is not just about ideas, but ideas put into practice. If I would call it, uh, it's time to dream uh, of our uh, aspirations today as uh, His Royal Majesty, uh, the, the Crown Prince, the Prime Minister, uh, uh, he always emphasized on, on facing the challenges and really put them into practice. And if we want to really do that, we have to dream of our futures today or, unfortunately, live the nightmare down the line. So it's, it's not a luxury. It is there to really do the right changes in the services that we're providing to the citizens and make things happen differently to target the new changes happening always as, as, as the catastrophe is happening or even that to, to match the aspiration. The changes that we are aspire for is in productivity, in uh, lowering the, the um, uh, uh, fiscal expenses, but also um, uh, invigorating the uh, economy um, with the new, if I would call it, anticipatory um, uh, uh, innovation, anticipatory innovation and anticipatory innovative governance that we are trying to put in place. And how can this be further integrated in BIPA's government leadership programs? The point that we have managed to do through this project is that we already have the National Leadership Development Program, which is a program linked to the career progression of all civil servants and is approved by the cabinet. This program is supported and financed um, uh, and it is there for all the civil servants from the lower level to the highest level. Each and every level have to have uh, a certain dose of innovation thinking and innovation in practice so that they can really transform their own uh, work into reality based on innovative methodology. This is not possible without the integration of the innovation into the National Leadership Program. This is why this kind of program is necessary to make sure that we hit the ground and move, uh, as we call it, we have traction 
2019, we had 129 projects out of this, uh, uh, the total programs of the National Leadership Development Program. Uh, just last year, with all the, um, uh, uh, if I would call them, pauses in the program, around six months we have managed to pause because of the COVID uh, uh, pandemic, um, we've managed to have around 69 projects all are into practice, all are action-oriented. And we want all of those type of projects to be based on innovative methodology that would bring more uh, the aspirations of the leadership and the aspirations of the citizens into uh, real practice. And that was the Institute of Public Administration, the BIPA Director General, Dr. Aid Mohammed bin Shams, Thank you for joining us. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 496,492 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 250,516 had taken the second. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. And to speak more about that, we are joined in the phone by the head of the NCD Group in Public Health and consultant in Public Health at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Amira al -Nur. Hello, Dr. Amira. Hello and good evening for you all. Good evening. Tell us about the progress of the vaccination campaign in the Kingdom. Yeah, thank you for this question, uh, and I'm glad to be part of this conversation. Um, as you know, that vaccination um, is the most efficient and effective uh, way um, to prevent diseases and limit uh, pandemics and epidemics all through. Vaccination uh, prevents the infections, severe infections and moderate ones, uh, complications, and uh, reduce the spread of the virus and uh, reduce its uh, spread between uh, the, uh, in the community as well as um, reducing the chance of um, mutations for the virus. And the vaccination campaign process uh, is going uh, smoothly and efficiently. It's monitored and well planned. Um, it's uh, one of the very um, successful um, um, campaigns in, in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, the uh, menu of five vaccines that are approved um, are offered to, uh, with the aim to provide protections and uh, um, safety for the, all the uh, citizens and um, for all ages, including pregnant women and high-risk groups. And the uh, process of vaccination, um, I mean, starts with registration through a link um, that's called the healthalert.gov.bh. Uh, the citizens and nationals and uh, residents can uh, access the website, website and choose from a menu of uh, vaccines that are all approved um, by uh, the authorities and by FDAs, and they are all safe and effective. Uh, the vaccination is offered free of charge and um, followed by text messages to direct the citizens to their services uh, that provide the vaccinations, including uh, the exhibition center halls, uh, local health centers, uh, King Hamad Hospital, as well as now the Citra Mall uh, vaccination center. And this is offered from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. The cold chain is, uh, for the vaccine is ensured and the campaign is further um, strengthened by an awareness campaign uh, with the, in collaboration with Ministry of Information as well as um, uh, all social media platforms. And that was the head of the NCD group in public health and consultant in public health at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Amira al -Nur. Thank you for joining us. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 8,401 with 655 recoveries and 824 registered new cases. 241 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 549 are contacts of active cases and 34 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus.